Hello, Internet. It's Keith Tanner here from Fly Miata, and today we're going to be talking about a new shock absorber from Kony. It's not that new. It's been around for a few months, but this we're going to actually dive into what it is, what makes it work, how it feels, and why you might be interested in it. So, as always, if you have any questions during this broadcast, go ahead and put them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them live. If you have any questions in the future, go ahead and put them in the comments. We will do our best to answer them in the future. Uh, and, of course, as always, if you like this sort of content, remember we have a whole bunch of stuff on all of our social media uh, feeds, so like, comment, subscribe, you know the whole deal. So, the new shock from Kony is the Special Active. That's this red one here in the middle. Um, and I'm going to start with some terminology just to make things super exciting. They used to sell a shock called the Frequently Selective Damping, the FSD. It was gold in color. And that was effectively the first generation of this technology. It was never available for the Miata. Um, and when they came out with the second gen, I think this is about the right timing, uh, they started calling the technology FSD, so the actual valving and things that are inside this what the little mechanism. And then shocks that use it are given the active branding. So this is the active version of the old Kony Special, or the old Kony Special, the Kony Special brand. Uh, there's going to be active versions of other Kony brands as well, such as the Rage shocks. Um, I think their motorhomes are doing active versions of those as well. In the Miata market, we only really care about this one, which is the Special Active, and that's what we'll call it now, just to avoid confusion with FSD. But the FSD, the frequency selective damping, is the technology inside the Special Active. Now, this is a technology that is actually used quite a bit. Um, it's been around for a little while. This is, it's on the second generation, but it's also used in production cars. Um, there's something like 5 million car, cars in Europe that are running this thing. It's been licensed to some other manufacturers. Apparently, there's a Jeep on the road right now that uses it. I think it's the Cherokee. Um, not under the Kony name, but the technology has been licensed. So it's actually being used quite a bit in the, in the OEs. So it's a little hard to explain. Um, big thanks go to Leave Grimes at Kony, who spent quite a bit of time on the phone with me explaining this, working through out ways to describe it. Um, it's something apparently he's been struggling with for a while, has best to describe this. I used to think of it as a blow-off valve. When you got to a certain, a certain speed, um, it would basically release all the pressure and let things move smoothly through the, uh, the travel to, to make a nice, um, nice comfortable ride. And I believe that's how the Olin's DFV works, which is a similar sort of concept. But this is more of a blow-on valve. What it does is it runs a relatively soft damping until it gets a a low frequency movement. So high frequency movements, ones that are fairly short in duration, um, have, ver have less rebound damping on them to allow the, sharp, the short, sharp shocks of a bump um, allow the wheel to move smoothly and easily without a lot of resistance from the damping. And then when it becomes a longer uh, event, it, it say that's chassis roll, for example, or a really, really big hit, then at that point, the FSD mechanism effectively acts as an amplifier for the pressures inside and stiffens the shock up. So it's sort of auto adjusting for you and it's doing it based on time, not position, not shaft speed, but it's on time, which is, neat, which is why they used the frequency description originally. Um, but it basically means that sustained hits mean more damping, whereas little short ones mean less damping. Make sense? Let's hope so. Um, so it's not really a blow off valve in terms of it's, it's stiff until all of a sudden it gets to a certain a certain speed or pressure and it blows off all of its, uh, all of its extra pressure, it's, it's almost the opposite. And so the end result is a decrease in certain frequencies. And generally speaking, these are the frequencies that will allow a car in a Miata, for example, a cowl shake. You get that shutter through the windshield frame when you hit a bump um, so that they've tuned to try to avoid that as much as possible, try to cut those frequencies out, you know, allow them to move more freely while keeping the lower frequencies, the ones like body roll, um, say when you're diving into a corner, brake dive, that sort of thing, is to stiffen up and to deal with those. So, effectively, we're after improved ride and improved handling. Now, because of the way it works, because it's time-based as well as, I, th I think velocity probably goes into there a little bit, but it's mostly time-based, it doesn't really show up on a regular shock dynograph, the sort that just swing the shock through its range at different, at different speeds. And so people ask if it's digressive, valving, this kind of thing. Not really. Apparently, it shows up looking weird on a shock dyno chart, which is why you don't see dyno charts for them. Um, but apparently, it looks weird. But if you put the car in, say, a shaker rig or a, uh, a, a four-post lift or something, or four-post rig, where you can actually move the wheels, move the shocks at varying speeds at varying, um, for varying times, at that point, you can actually see it happen. And of course, that's a better 
uh, simulation of what's really happening on the road. Do you have any questions there, Mike, or is everyone just sitting there going, what the heck is he talking about? Yes, he's, he's nodding his head. Okay, so what does it mean for you as, as a Miata people? Um, all of you as Miata people. They don't, let's see, we have done some back-to-back -back testing on this, and we have, we have a set of these on one of our NAs. We set up another NA to be as close to identical as we could manage, ran it on a set of sports. Uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a car on a set of STRTs here in the house at the moment, but we were mostly interested in the comparison between the sport and the special active in terms of how they feel. Because there's that time-based, almost that very slight delay before the shock stiffens up, it's not as crisp as a sport. Um, it's, got, it's a little more biased towards the ride comfort. They're certainly trackable, but they're going to have a little more initial lean, because a little more movement before basically the shock sort of grabs hold and starts taking care of things. So this, the sport is still the sportier option, um, because, well, for one, it is adjustable, so you can adjust the damping where you like it. Um, the FSD or the Special Active will be doing some adjusting for you, but it's a little, you know, there is that very slight time delay until it sort of takes into account what's going on. So it's a good all round if you don't want to go as far as the sport. Um, it's not valve to deal with higher, higher rate springs, so it's not an option for flying me out of springs. It's also not a good option for lowered cars. And here we're going to get into sort of characteristic of the FSD technology is that it doesn't play well with bump stops. Um, basically, if you're near the bump stop, you're very, very close to it, and you manage to put yourself into it, you can be into the bump stop, which is a very high spring rate, when you're still in sort of the light damping range, and you can get a rebound problem on that. So you don't want to run them on a lowered car. Um, and you know, NA Miatas, NB Miatas don't have a lot of travel in the back to start with, so that's not a, that's not a good match for them, especially you, know, you don't want to lower them, don't want to take away any travel. So these should be run with stock springs. So really what they are is they're a, an alternative to the stock replacement STRT. Um, they have the same sort of warranties, a lot of the same attributes that the STRT does, but they have that extra bit of body control that comes out of the stiffening up, adjusting for the, uh, for the body roll, and they should have slightly better ride quality as well. And of course they do have the same warranty that, that Kony offers on both. Because of that bump stop situation that they have, we do include new bump stops with all of our, uh, all of our special active shocks. Um, we do with all of the shocks we sell, actually, but in the case of the Special Active, it's particularly important, and especially on the NA, which is why we go to the effort of package them in, packaging them in to make sure you don't have that big rubber bump stop in the way you've got a slightly softer, more, more um, gradual uh, one that we supply that works really well with, you know, with the amount of travel that is available. Do we have any questions back there, Mike? And the question is, are we going to offer these for other generations like NCs and NDs? And the answer is yes. Um, the NC ones are in production right now. I don't know when we're actually going to see them, but the, the factory is spooling up to make those. Uh, the ND ones are currently in the prototype stage, meaning that Kony has them. They're, they're making prototype ones to test with. They're out there evaluating them, modifying them, et cetera. So it'll be a while before we see the NDs. Um, the NCs shouldn't be too much longer at the time that we are filming this video. Uh, and the NAs and NBs are on the shelf as we speak. Um, one other note is that the FSD mechanism, the actual technology inside, occupies the same part of the shock as the adjuster mechanism on the sport, which is why you're not going to see a sport active. Um, at the moment, they can't both be packaged in the same shock, so that unfortunately is, you're not going to, you can mix these two, but you can't mix these two. Um, but for the time being, that is, uh, that is the case. What Coney comes up with in the future, we can't say for sure. Mike, you are looking like you have a question. So the question is, the bump stop question, should we do a shorter, stiffer bump stop instead of a longer, soft one? And the, the bump stops that we use, we had some kicking around here. I saw some a moment ago. They're sitting on top of a pile of Coney shocks back there, actually. Um, the bump stops that we use are, I think they're a little bit shorter than the factory NA um, bump stops. They are a little bit softer, so they have a more gradual progression. And that is along the lines of what Coney think work well with these shocks. Um, I was, was talking to, to Lee about that this morning. Um, and he says that that's the sort of bump stop he would choose for this type of shock to sort of make it work as best as well as possible. Everyone in the background is running around trying to find a set of bump stops for me to throw at something. Uh, any other questions there, Mike? So the price range, um, luckily, because of the way these work out in terms of these are the factory 
these are the replacement. These are the sporty replacement. These are the performance replacement. Um, the pricing follows. This is the least expensive of the of the Coney line. This one sits in between the STRT and the uh, and the Sport, and the Sport sits at the top until we get into the hand built race stuff. But we're just looking at the the overall ones. If you are running a Miata that is running stock springs and you're looking for a good quality, affordable replacement, that's when you're going to look for the STRT. Um, it's a it's a better quality replacement than a lot of the stock replacement shocks out there. Um, it's got that lifetime warranty. Um, that would be my choice for that. If you want something that's a little more sporty, but you don't want to deal with the adjustment on the, uh, on the sports, you don't want to go with the cost of the sports, then that's what the Special Active is for. You know, the occasional mostly street car, but if you want to take it on the track, you want to take it to the other cross, it will certainly survive. And then the sport is for those who want to run stiffer springs, such as our springs. Uh, it is for those who want the ability to adjust the damping the way they like it. Um, and it's for those who are a little more biased towards performance, although we have found that the ride quality is extremely good on these as well. So hopefully that uh, covers all the questions. Is there anything else there, Mike? Nope? Okay, so if you do have any more questions about the, uh, about the new Coney Special Active, please do contact our customer support guys. They'll be able to help you out with that. Um, questions about any of these shocks, which one would suit your car best? Uh, again, we'll be happy to, happy to help out. We don't sell these as part of suspension packages. We package them with the bump stops, but since they are intended to be used with stock springs, we don't sell suspension kits, include them. The Sport, of course, is the mainstay of many of our suspension kits and is included with our springs in a lot of our suspension kits. So lots of options out there. So in the meantime, um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, like I said, put them in the comments or give us a call. Uh, we will be back with more content like this next week. If you like this kind of stuff, like, comment, subscribe. You know how all that works. You've seen videos on the internet before. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for your attention. My name is Keith Tanner from Flying Miata.